out of the Bible. Okay, now, now we understand we're reading history, and we, the, the reason we're reading this history is because we went into slavery, and we, we're, because of breaking God's commandments. This is one of the commandments we're breaking. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse five. Listen up, black and Latino woman. Listen up, come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Let me ask you, what do women wear today that pertains to men? You hit it right on the head. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, which is pants. I have on pants, you have on pants. That's confusion to the most high. You understand? That's confusion. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment? A dress, skirt. That's a woman's garment, so we're clear on the dress code, right? Pants are for men, dresses and skirts for women. Right. Read on. For all that do so. For all that do so. For the man, for the woman that wears what pertains to a man, for the man that wears what pertains to a woman. For all that do so. Are an abomination. Are what? Are an abomination. Are an abomination. Unto who? Unto the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord thy God. The word abomination means detestable, filthy, right. nasty in his sight. Right. So sister, according to the Bible, you're breaking one of God's laws. Yeah, you didn't know that now, did you? The men wore the pants. We're gonna show it to you, Exodus 28. When you say, when people say, I wear the pants in the house, what do they say? You've heard that term before, right? I make the rules. I make the rules. Now, in the household, does the man make the rules or does the woman? What do you mean it depends? Sometimes you gotta work, huh? There's no such thing as compromise with the Lord. It's either the Lord's way or you die. It's, it, there's no compromise. We're gonna show that to you. We're gonna show you that the men wore the pants and then we're gonna show you that there's no compromise with the man and the woman. Come on, 22. Yeah, 21, 22. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, uh -huh. thy brother, uh -huh. and his sons with him. Aaron and his brother and his sons with him. That's the boys, the males. Read on. And shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, uh -huh. that, they may, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Read on. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Thou shalt make them what? Linen Breaches. Linen breeches. The word breeches. That's an old word for pants. Right. Down south they call it breeches. That's breeches here. That's pants right. for the man. When did God ever ordain compromise between the man and the woman? He never did. We're going to read it to you right now. 1 Corinthians 11, start at verse uh, 1. And then we're going to jump to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 1, uh -huh. be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Be ye followers, read that again. Be ye followers of me, uh -huh. even as I also am of Christ. So Paul wrote, be followers of me as I am of Christ. We're going to see the order of Christ. Verse, jump to verse 4, jump to verse 3. Come on, verse 3. But I would have you know. But I would have you know. At the head of every man, at the head of every man, is Christ. Is Christ? So there's no contention. There's no contention or compromise with man and Christ. We understand the men, the men in Israel. We understand Christ is our head. We don't contend with that. That's the way it is. So let it be. We don't. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is who? The man. And the head of the woman is the man. There's no compromise. But yet, with the black and Latino woman, they want compromise. There is no compromise in the Lord. Right. Read that again. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the black and Latino woman 
is the black and Latino man. Thus saith the Lord. So now, sister, you understand that there's no compromise. Are you married? Were you married before? Okay. Many of our sisters, many women, many Latino and black women want to be married. You want to be married, you want to have a husband, right? What does the word husband mean? First Peter chapter 3. The word husband means Lord. Black and Latino man, you are the Lord over your wife. Understand that. There's no compromise. You are the Lord over your wife. We're going to show that to you. Come on. First Peter three and six. chapter 3, verse 6. Watch this. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. The word obey is, a, is the most difficult word for the black and Latino woman to understand. Because when, the, when you hear the word obey, you say, well, I ain't got to obey nobody. I'm not a dog. But Sarah obeyed her husband. Just like at work, you have a boss, right? At work, you have a boss. When your boss tells you to do something, do you not do it? Why is that? Because he's your boss. Right, just like your husband is your boss. Okay? It's the same order. You listen to your boss at work, but you won't obey your husband. That's out of order. Come on. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Even as Sarah, a black woman, obeyed Abraham, a black man, her husband. She obeyed him. Read on. Calling him Lord. Calling him what? Lord. Calling him Lord. Black and Latino men, you are Lord over your wife. That's what God says. You are the position of Christ in your house. That's right. Sister, you understand that? You accept that? This is the word of God here. This is the same book that you read slavery in. The same book you read slavery in tells you how to conduct yourself in the house with your husband. Do you accept it? Do you understand it? I understand. But do you, but you don't accept it. You fight, you're fighting with it. You're fighting with it. I'm on the line. You fight, what are you on the line about? What are you fighting with? What are you fighting with? I need to study more. You don't like, you no? Know, what is it to study? We're reading you the word of God. Jeremiah 3.15, because when, when the black woman says, I need to study, I need to go, what she's saying is, she, what she's saying is, she does not accept it. Because we're showing it to you in the Bible. God is not gonna come out of the clouds and teach it to you. God is not gonna say, you, he's not gonna come and teach you. God is sending the men to do it. We're gonna show you, Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah chapter three, verse 15. Come on. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. What did God say? I will give you pastors according to my heart. Do you hear that, black woman? The Most High said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. What is God's heart? The Bible, the laws in the Bible. Read that again. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. To my heart, read on. Which shall feed you with knowledge. Shall feed you with knowledge. What is knowledge? Malachi 2 and 7. What is knowledge? I'm gonna show you. Malachi 2 and 7 for knowledge. Sister, you cannot fight against the word of the most high God. You cannot fight and win. You understand? There's an order. You either get in line or get laid down by the Lord. It's either, it's either one of the two. There's no compromise. There's no it's no uh, gray area. You understand? Come on. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of God's laws. Knowledge of who you are according to the Bible. Right. Come on. And they should keep the law at his mouth. And they should keep the law. Like a woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. That's a law. Thou shalt keep the law. Read on. Seek, seek the, law. the law at his mouth. Thou shalt seek the law at his mouth, meaning seek the law in here. So, sister, you said you gotta go, you gotta look, you gotta stay. We're showing you the Bible. We are teaching it to you as thus saith the Lord. It's up to you to either repent and humble yourself or get laid down. Give me Proverbs 3 and 5. Let me ask you a question. Sister, um, where are you from? You are um, West Indian, Black American, what's, what's your nationality? West Indian. You West Indian, all right? So according to the Bible, 
The so-called West Indian blacks, they are from the tribe of Benjamin. All right? The people that was brought here in slavery make up the 12, make up the tribes of the children of Israel. All right? So that, that's what the Bible proves, sister. The brother was touching on it earlier on. But well, you said some early on. You said that um, you don't believe you are atheist, right? You don't believe, you don't believe in God. I, is, is there a reason why you don't believe in God? Is it something you went through? Or what, 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 what is it? Or is you just following the so-called white men? Because they are the ones that's, that believe in atheism. Alright? What it is? You've been to some when you was young and you feel like the Most High wasn't there to help you. What, what, what is it? Because a lot of times our people, they've been through stuff. They see a lot of bad stuff happen. And they, that's, that turned them off from the Bible a lot of times. They say, listen, if there is a God, why did our people go into slavery? All right, why, why are these things happening? Why wars going on throughout the world? And a lot of people say that that's why they don't believe in the Bible. So I'm trying to figure out what it is with you. Well, what is it? It's complicated. Your father was a pastor. No? Alright, so, um, what did the brother say to me? I got a problem with green father. Alright, you bring that up. Okay. So you said it's complicated. Can you, uh, shorten it? Can you. Well, he talked about it, you know, a little bit. You know, Some, a, so, lot of, a lot of bad things happen. A lot of bad things happen. Okay. Well, now, again, but there's a reason now, there's a reason you stopped here today to hear this Bible. There's a reason for that. I am open minded. There's a reason the Most High brought you here. We didn't just come up here on your. The Most High controls all things. Psalm 14 and 1. I'm going to show you something now because the Most High. There is, there is a God. There is a God. It's not a coincidence blacks and Latinos live the way we live. It's not a coincidence that this black. It's not a coincidence. It's because we broke God's commandments. Okay? <laughs> now, Psalm 14 and 1. Come on. Psalm chapter 14, verse. Word, come on. The fool have said in his heart, uh -huh. there is no God. You hear what God said? Read that again. The fool said in his heart. The fool has said in his heart, meaning in his mind. Read on. There is no God. That there is no God. So there, they, what the Most High is telling you is that the, the person that says there is no God is a fool. But now we brought you here to correct you. We brought you here to bring you up in the lunch of this Bible and who you are. Go back to uh, Psalms, go back to Proverbs uh, 3 and 5. Because sister, you 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 said, you know, you go on, you go off of your own mind. Out the mind of man is wicked. You must go with what God tells you to do. You understand? Yes. Proverbs. Read that again. Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. The fool have said in his heart. There is no God. So God says, when you don't believe in him, all right, when you don't believe in this Bible, the Bible says you are a fool, all right, read. They are corrupt. Because you know what? More time when people don't believe in the Bible, the scripture says that they are what? They are corrupt. They are corrupt. Because what does this Bible make up of? Make up of? What does it make up of? It's make up of laws, statutes, commandments, all right? prophecies and the history of a people. You know who, the, who history this is? That's in this Bible. It's our history. That's what's made up in this Bible. Huh? Yes, it is the Bible. Alright, so read that again. The fool have said in his heart there is no God. You know what? They are corrupt. You know what? They have done abominable works. Because people that don't believe in the Bible, our brothers and sisters, they don't understand. A lot of them are in doing abominable works. You understand? You know what I mean by abominable works? All right. The brother was touching on some early on, such as a woman wearing what pertains unto a man, which is what? What does God says about that? It's a sin. It's just a sin. He says, it's a, get it and read it real quick. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because the scripture said they have done abominable work, right? <laughs> this is what the scripture said. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman should not wear what pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And men shouldn't wear what pertaineth unto a woman. Read on. 
for all that do so. So God says, if you're doing that, are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. God says you are abomination. Psalm chapter 68, verse 20. He that is our God is the God of our salvation. And unto God, the Lord bringeth the issues from death. And from God, the Lord brings the issues of death. God brings death, okay? He brings evil. You seen somebody shot? We have two. You seen somebody die in front of you? We have two. Isaiah 45. Give me that. Verse uh, 7. Isaiah 45, verse 7. So these are the justifications many of our people say, I don't believe in God because I've seen bad things. Come on. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and I create darkness. God says he forms the light, he creates darkness. Read. I make peace. God, God creates peace on the earth and creates evil. And God creates evil. You're never going to hear this in your church. God creates evil. What? I never heard that. My pastor never taught me that. These pastors don't know the Bible. None of these Christians out here know the Bible. Read it again. I form the light and create darkness. Come on. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, Amos 3 and verse 6. So all the things that you may justify yourself not believing in God is exactly why you should believe in God. You seen evil? He said he brought the evil. Why? Because of sin. That's why. Many of our people hate the laws of God. So that's why there's sin and death and damnation in the earth. Why do we go into slavery? The brother explained it to you. Because we as a people, God's chosen people, broke every law he gave us. From thou shalt have no other gods before him, we broke that, to thou shalt not commit adultery, we always break that, to thou shalt not covet. We break every law God has established. Read. Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And the people not be afraid? And the people not be afraid? What is the trumpet? Back in ancient days, the men upon the walls would blow the trumpet to let you know when an enemy was coming. But what is this making reference to in a spiritual context? The prophets of God are telling you what's going to happen in the earth, what happened to us as a people. Read it again. And the, shall, the a, verse. shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be an evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Have, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Come on. Surely the glory of God will do nothing but reveal it, his secrets unto his servants. The prophets. So he reveals his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. So what we've shown you, I was in church all my life, and what I heard the brothers teach, I never heard. So I know that these are the prophets of the Lord. When I heard when I was a young man, I heard these prophecies. I said, those are the prophets of the Lord. Because my ministers in Christianity wasn't teaching me nothing. Right. Go to Sunday school. Go to Sunday school. Women on top. Black men is nothing. We worship in a white image of, of this guy. I said, this is madness for my youth. I understood this was insanity. That's why a lot of black men end up in jail. Right. Homosexuals right. beat their wives, beat their women. Because right. why? They're not following this. That's right. That's right. Why do women get child pains when they have babies? You have a child? You have a, your, mo well, your mother had a child. Why do women have child pains and menstrual pain? cramps? Why? That's how it is. That's how it is. You should ask yourself these questions. Why? It's in the Bible. Give me Genesis 3.16. When you read the history of Adam and Eve, God said, Adam, get me first Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7 for the first. Come on. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let's talk about Adam for a second. Read. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground is the soil. What color is the dust of the ground? The soil. Brown. From a dark brown, the light brown to a dark brown. The deeper you dig, the darker it gets. So that proves Adam was one. A black man. That is so easy, but in churches, it's so confusing. You ask many of our people, they go to white man's Adam. 
How are you gonna get a white man and get them turned to this? It's impossible! But you can have two black people as dark as me get an albino child. You ever seen an albino? But you can never get two Caucasians and get a child of my complexion. Never going to happen. Right. Read it again. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground. So what was Adam? A black man! And Eve was taken from where? His rib. His rib. So the first man and the first woman was black. Right. right. You have a great history, a great heritage that you've been denied in schools. Because this white man's education system, their church system, teaches us lies. Now Genesis 3.16. So I asked you a question about why do women get menstrual cramps and ch uh, labor pains. When you read the history in the Bible, Eve rebelled against her husband. Adam was teaching her the law. She went to the serpent. Oh, oh, what has the serpent got to say about this? And the serpent is only symbolic for the white man. Read it. Genesis chapter three, verse 16. Come on. Unto the woman he said. Now he's talking to the black woman, that's the woman, come on. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. I will greatly multiply your sorrow and thy conception and your conceptions read in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children in sorrow shall you bring forth children that's some labor pains i was talking about read. and thy desire this shall is why be. and because of that it says your desire shall what shall be to thy husband come on and he shall rule over thee and he shall rule over thee so because the first woman was rebellious to God's laws coming through her husband, she wanted a compromise. She wanted a 50-50 relationship. Oh, can I prove that? Give me that, with the serpents talking to Eve. Three, yes. Three and up, up near the top. When the serpent says you shall be as God, I want that. Come on. Genesis chapter three, verse six. Here it comes. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. When it's talking about the tree, it's not talking about this, like if we got a tree right there. It's talking about knowledge. It's talking about wisdom. Go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eye. Like the astrologers, pleasant to the eye. They call out many times, they call out a tree of understanding. Astrology, star system, constellations, read. Right. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. It could make you wise, come on. She took all the fruit thereof and did eat. I want, I want you to read above it. Start at verse, let me look, bear with me. Start at three, start at three. But the fruit of the tree. Start at two. Verse two. And the woman said unto the serpent, why may, why may he eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden? Come on. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said he shall not eat of it. So the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden is not talking about a regular tree. It's a parable. It's talking about the constellations. Read. Neither shall ye touch it. And don't touch it, meaning don't learn it. Read. Lest she die. Lest you die. Read. Come on. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. The serpent, which is the white man today, said you won't die, just like today. God gives the woman laws. The white man says, you don't have to obey that law. You even know about this, the, 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 the menstrual cycle? The white man says, guess what? I got a, uh, what's that called? I can, no, 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 not the pill, the other thing, patch. They got the patch to put on your arm. You don't gotta worry about your menstrual. Everything this white man creates for women goes contrary to God's law. Right. It's the same thing in the garden, read. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Come on. And ye shall be as gods. And you shall be as gods. That's the point I wanted. The serpent told a woman, you shall be as gods. How come he didn't go to Adam and say that? Because Adam was already on that level. But the woman was not. The woman was meant to be by Adam's side and to obey him. But the one, so Satan went to the woman and says, you don't gotta do that, I got another way for you to be a God. 
That's why if you examine all nations on earth, which nations say women are equal to men? Which nation? Name some. It ain't the Arabs, it ain't the Africans, it ain't the Chinese, it ain't the East Indians. It's only European nations. That's why amongst these European nations, women have power and authority and your families are dysfunctional. Why my man leave? I don't understand. You in therapy. My husband left me. He was no damn good. Your man's crazy because he has no strength, no, uh, give me the word. He has no, no fortitude in society. From a youth, he goes to church. The white man is Jesus. Oh, it's Jesus. The woman says, listen, beats the children. I used to get beat to worship that thing. My father used to sit there mad. He never stood up against my mother. And that happens with a lot of black families. The woman beats the child, forces them to worship this. All that goes back to Genesis. Genesis 3.16 again. Come on. Genesis 3, chapter 16. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. That's why you have labor pains, menstrual cramps. Come on. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall rule over you. Most black women despise that law. They don't like that thing. Give me the prophecy, Isaiah 3 and 12. Here's the prophecy. Listen good. God knows his people and what would happen in the last days. You got it? Come on. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Now what I'm showing you also, everything we're going over, sister, you said you're an atheist, you are not an atheist. There is no black man or black woman that's a true atheist. Because when we get in trouble, what do we do? Hmm. Pray, somebody, pray for me. That's the first thing we do as a people. Come on. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Read the prophecy again. As for my people. As for my people, you blacks and Latinos, read. Children are their oppressors. Now let's pause there. Children are our oppressors. What does that mean? How do children oppress us today? Think. How do children oppress us? You know the answer. You're not, you don't want to accept it. I'm going to tell you. Gangs. These youth, our youth in these gangs. We cried about Trayvon Martin getting killed, right? Everybody mad. That was one boy. One boy. How many black boys get killed by your black sons? Thousands. Thousands. And you men and women don't say nothing. Oh, I ain't saying nothing about that. Oh, but as soon as the white man kills one, oh, Jesus! You're crazy. You're insane. What is the greater evil being done at this moment in time? Our own young boys killing us. The rapes that's committed against women. It's not the white man doing it today. It's your own black sons doing it. Read it again. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. And the Bible says women rule over them. What does that mean? What does that mean? Women rule over them. What, what about that part? You, what does that part mean? And women rule over them. Women rule over them is self-explanatory. When you go into the black family, who's the head of the family? The woman. The woman. What are we reading? Bible prophecy. Now, that doesn't mean that men are not no good. Yeah, a lot of them are no good, but they've got to be taught who they are. They've got to be re-educated who they are. That's where the woman comes in and teaches the sons. But if you don't do that, if you teach them this garbage, they're gonna grow up to be your gang members, your pimps, your drug dealers. I want all you women and men to understand that thing. Because this is a revolution of God now. This time that we're living in, the greatest time on earth is a revolution. A spiritual and biblical revolution. All these lies are gonna be shut down in the earth. Come on back, Ezekiel. Coming up. All praise.